good morning everybody welcome to our presentation on introduction to green buildings and gsas green building rating system in this presentation we are going to discuss what is a green building what are the characteristics of green buildings what is the significance of green buildings what are the various green building rating systems what is gsas and who developed it how gsas was developed and finally how gsas certification works let us start with a very basic question what is a green building how it is different from conventional buildings and what are the expectations from green buildings green buildings are expected to be energy efficient that is they consume less energy compared to conventional buildings green buildings are water efficient and they consume less water compared to conventional buildings green buildings offer better indoor environment for the occupants what is indoor environment indoor environment includes thermal comfort visual comfort visual comfort is also referred as lighting comfort air quality sometimes acoustics also plays a significant role in indoor environment so indoor environment includes thermal comfort thermal comfort includes variables like dry bulb temperature relative humidity air velocity radiant temperature etc a visual comfort or lighting comfort air quality and acoustics acoustics is significant only for some types of buildings like schools healthcare facilities and so on green buildings use eco friendly or sustainable materials compared to conventional buildings green buildings generate less waste both during construction and occupancy green buildings are expected to have lesser transportation requirement compared to conventional buildings green buildings protect or restore habitat habitat means natural environment so green buildings protect or restore natural environment overall green buildings have lesser environmental impact compared to conventional buildings further green buildings are good for the people good for the planet and profitable to the owner we have discussed what is green buildings and what is the expectation from green building now what is the significance of green buildings buildings directly contribute to all major environmental issues like climate change global warming depletion of resources ozone depletion land pollution water pollution air pollution etc the closest possible solution for these environmental impacts is to go for green buildings hence because of the significance of green buildings green buildings are a part of building regulation in many countries so how green buildings are certified green buildings are certified by various green building rating systems green building rating systems will assess the buildings for energy efficiency for energy water materials indoor environment location accessibility etc so uh, green building rating systems will assess the buildings on how energy efficient the building is how the water efficient the building is what materials are used in the building how is the indoor environment how the building is connected with other facilities how the building is connected with the infrastructure and so on and based on the assessment on these parameters certification is issued some green building rating systems offer stars like 1 star 2 star 3 star etc some green building rating system offer points some green building rating system offer grades like a a plus b and so on some green building rating system like gold silver platinum etc so there are number of uh, green building rating systems whose assessment system is different as we discussed in the previous slide there are various green building rating systems across the world to name a few in australia the rating system used is green star in brazil aqua and lead brazil are commonly used in canada league canada and green globes are commonly used in china green building evolution standard finland promise hong kong cpas germany dgnb us lead uk briam japan caspi in uae there are two common green building rating systems one is the dubai municipality green building regulation and estidama pl green building rating system in qatar the rating system commonly used is gsas gsas stands for global sustainability assessment system previously it was called as qsas 
Qatar Sustainability Assessment System. This presentation is all about GSAS. So let us understand why GSAS is significant for professionals practicing in Qatar. A GSAS is a part of Qatar Construction Standard 2010 and 2014. Section 7 of Qatar Construction Standard 2014 talks about green construction where some of the GSAS requirements are mandatory to be complied. It is mandatory for most government projects in Qatar to be GSAS certified. Most of the projects target between 3 star to 4 star. Projects from Ashgal, Rail, Qatar 2022 that is the Qatar Olympic Committee, Port, Luzail, Energy City, Aukaf, Supreme Education Council and all ministry projects has to go for GSAS certification. Who developed GSAS and how it was developed? GSAS is developed by Gulf Organization for Research and Development. GSAS, as we discussed before, is an abbreviation of Global Sustainability Assessment System. It was previously QSAS, that is Qatar Sustainability Assessment System. So GSAS is developed by God, Gulf Organization for Research and Development. Often it is abbreviated as God, G O R D God. It is a non profit organization. It is a subsidiary of Qatari Dayar Real Estate Development, which is a fully government organization. The God office is located in QSTP, that is Qatar Science and Technology Park. The mission and vision of God is to promote healthy, energy, and resource efficient, environmentally responsible building practices in Qatar and the entire Gulf region. Since uh, the rating system is targeting entire Gulf region, it was renamed from QSAS to GSAS. And he is the man behind uh, the development of God and GSAS, Dr. Yusuf Alhor. He is the founder and chairman of Gulf Organization for Research and Development. How GSAS was developed? So GSAS was developed by God in collaboration with T.C. Chan Center at the University of Pennsylvania, a School of Architecture at Georgia Institute of Technology and various other reputed organizations and experts across the world. So here is a further information on how GSAS was developed. GSAS was developed by referring to more than 140 green building rating systems, tools and guidelines. And from those 140 plus green building rating systems and guidelines, 40 whole building rating systems were shortlisted and from that 40 whole building rating system, 6 well established green building rating systems were again shortlisted. These 6 rating systems are BREAM which is from UK, LEED from US, Green Globes which is from Canada, CPAS from Hong Kong, CASB from Japan and International SB tool. Apart from this, for energy, the two well known standards were developed that is ASHRAE and European Union's CEN ISO. So these references were used to develop GSAS. So the best practices from these references, regional context is applied to best practices of these rating systems and the result is GSAS. The GSAS rating system before it was published, it has been reviewed by various local and international experts from many countries from private sector, public sector, industry experts and so on. Finally, GSAS was published. GSAS offers three certification schemes. Number one, design build certification. Number two, construction management certification. And number three, certification for operations and maintenance. Design build certification, as the name implies, it is applicable for all new projects. Within design build certification, different typologies of buildings are addressed like commercial, neighborhood, single and group residential, education facilities, mask, parks, workers accommodation, sports facilities and rideways. So all these projects has to go for GSAS design and build certification. The second certification scheme is GSAS construction management certification. Construction management certification is for assessing the best practices followed during the construction process. So the certification is not for the project, it is for the construction process. So that is construction management certification. And the third certification is for operation maintenance, it is for existing buildings, 
where the building is built long before with or without certification but if the best practices in energy water and indoor environment are followed the building can go for gsas operations certification these are the three schemes of gsas certification so how gsas certification works so gsas rating systems as we discussed there are different gsas rating system for different typologies so these rating system has various categories the categories are urban connectivity site energy water materials indoor environment culture and economic value and management and operations so gsas rating system is divided into eight categories i'll come back to these categories and explain in little more detail but for now understand that gsas rating system is divided into various categories these categories further have something called as criteria here are some of the examples for criteria for example under urban connectivity the criteria are load on local traffic pedestrian pathways light pollution noise pollution these are the criteria under urban connectivity and energy we have the criteria like energy demand performance delivery performance and so on within these categories we have different criteria these criteria have a score based on how the project is performing this criteria will have a score of minus 1 to 3 there are exceptions we'll discuss about the exceptions later but most of the criteria most of the categories will have a score of minus 1 to 3 so minus 1 zero or one two and three so these are the possible points you can score in each criteria zero is basically the baseline or standard zero is basically standard and minus one means substandard if you are achieving less than the standard in those criteria then you will be given minus one and if you are better than the standard based on how much you are better than the standard you can get one two or three these are the scores offered for projects who are above standard so based on how much you are above the standard you can get a score of 1 2 or 3 so this is the score criteria these criterias will have score each criteria will have also something called as a weightage as a percentage because not all criteria are equally important for example energy efficiency and water efficiency are the most significant part of a green building so energy and water have higher weightage so each of the criteria has a weightage then finally so you have uh, different criteria you have a score and you have a weightage and finally what you have to do is find out the sum of sigma score into weightage for each criteria based on what is the final score you may get different levels of gsa certification just to give an example so here we have the categories the categories have different criteria each of the criteria will have a score the score is between minus 1 to 3 and then each of the criteria will also have a weightage for example here energy demand performance has say 5.2% co2 emissions have 4.56% each of the criteria has a weightage and finally the sum of all the scores and weightage will be the final score final score and based on how much you have scored based on how much you have scored if you are scoring less than 0 then your your performance is substandard you will not given certification your certification will be denied if you are scoring between 0 to 0.5 one star 0.5 to 1 two star and so on you can get up to six stars for every incremental 0.5 you can get one more star and you can get from one star to six stars so this is the gsas certification level let me go back to the uh, score and weightage and explain further in detail how the overall score is calculated so for example just for example consider that you have scored zero in all criteria except energy and water just for assumption just for understanding the calculation all criteria as energy demand delivery everything you are getting a score of 3 and water you are getting a score of 3 uh, together all energy criteria together the weightage is 26% water criteria the weightage is 14% so this is the weightage score and this is the weightage so now sigma sum of all the scores and sum of all the weightages so basically you have uh, zero in all other criteria so i will consider 3 sigma score into weightage am i right so what you have 3 into 0.26 
plus 3 into 0.14. Let's do a quick calculation. So it's 3 into 0.4. This is equal to 1.2. So 1.2. The overall score is 1.2. Where is 1.2 in the scoring sheet? It is here, which is equal to 3 star. So the project can get 3 star certification. That is 3 star certification. So this is how uh, uh, the certification is assessed. Now some more points about uh, these categories and the requirements. The scoring is generally minus 1 to 3 for all categories except urban connectivity 0 to 3. Similarly management operations the score is 0 to 3. For all others it is minus 1 to 3. And also the project has to score at least 0 in energy and water. Minimum score should be 0 in energy and water. If you are scoring minus 1 in energy and water, the certification will be denied. So there are overall 3 requirements. You should not score minus 1 in energy. You should not score minus 1 in water. And the overall score should be above 0. So if you achieve all these 3, you get GSA certification. Uh, let me give some more details about these categories for you to remember. So there are 8 categories in GSAS rating system. The approach of these categories is basically top-down approach. Let's plan this further. So top-down approach. So you have a building. This is your building, your, your project boundary, and you have your neighborhood, the surroundings. The first category is urban connectivity, uh, which is commonly abbreviated as UC. So urban connectivity talks about how the project is connected with the neighborhood how people will travel, is there a public transportation available, is it walkable to the basic services, is the infrastructure available close to the site, like sewage, electricity, like these services are available close to the site. These are the criteria which is addressed in urban connectivity. So urban connectivity talks about how the project is connected with the infrastructure and other facilities. The first category is about the neighborhood. Let's consider that you have you are having an aerial look at the at the at the project. You see what is the neighborhood, how it is connected. Uh, in the second category, the second category is site. In site, you go into the project boundary, not into the building. You go into the project boundary. So this is the uh, the the area covered in site. That is the area external to the building within the project boundary. So that is what is covered in site. So site covers uh, like how the, the exterior is illuminated, uh, how is the parking, uh, how is the rainwater managed. So these are the, uh, the criteria covered in, in site. So it covers everything external to the building but within the uh, project uh, boundary. Then 3, 4, 5, 3, 4 and 5 you go into the building, you go into the building, you go into the energy related systems. You go into the water related systems, you go into the materials used in the building right? and uh, six, you are going further one step, you are going inside the building, you are evaluating how the occupants feel inside the building that is indoor environment. So you are going further inside indoor environment. Okay, So these are the categories, further the seventh category goes further further inside on how the the building how the project is adding value to the culture and economy and, and finally how the building is operated and maintained how the building is operated and maintained these are the the categories under gsas so urban connectivity urban connectivity talks about how the project is connected with the neighborhood site talks about criteria the parameters that is uh, associated with uh, with the project site external to the building right like how is the landscape what is the type of plans used uh, how is the parking how is the uh, illumination and so on then you go into the building like we talk about the building systems like energy, water and materials used in the building. Sixth category, you go further inside the building where uh, it's about the occupants, how occupants feel inside the building. The seventh and eighth categories is about culture and economy and uh, management and operations. So that is about various GSAS uh, categories. So what is the process of GSAS certification? Now we have overall understanding of GSAS rating system. Now what is the process of GSAS certification? We are going to talk only about design build. Let us not talk about uh, instruction management or operations. Let's talk only about uh, design and build certification.
So uh, in design and build, there are two stages of certification. One is the, the design stage, the other one is the construction stage. In the design stage, first you have to register the project via GSAS kit. Then we have to submit all the documents, design documents associated with the project for each criteria. They will assess each of the document and based on the overall score you achieved during the design, you get something called as letter of conformance or it is also called as provisional certification. That is the certification given in the design stage. That is your design complies with the GSAS requirement. Then in the construction stage, again the project has to be uh, registered by the contractor or uh, supervision consultant. In the construction stage, there will be audits from God. It is called as conformance to design audit. So the purpose of the audit is to ensure that whether all the design credits you are pursuing is the construction really matching what you have submitted in the design. So that is done in uh, uh, conformance to design audit. If the conformance to design audit is satisfactory, then you get the final certification. This is how the GSAS certification works. So hope you have a good understanding of uh, GSAS Green Building Rating System now. We offer a wide range of services for clients, consultants and contractors. You can visit us at conservesolution.com or you can email us at info at conservesolution.com. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. You can leave a comment in the comment section or you can call us. Thank you very much.